Hello friends, welcome to my channel. This is Unit 5 of Gahad University Syllabus Witness and Examination of Witness. So we will cover section 118 to 166. Section 118 to 166 that is it is divided into two chapters section 9 and section 10. Section 9 uh, chapter sorry chapter 9 and chapter 10. Chapter 9 deals with witnesses and chapter 10 deals with examination of witnesses. Within sections 118 to 166 of the Indian Evidence Act 1872, so we have to remember the section 118 to 166, we will cover the primary requirements of witnesses, their competency, and their examination. So, first, in introduction as per Bantam, witnesses are the eyes and ears of justice. So, we have to quote Bantam. When we will answer, we will write answer in exam. Bantam. This will give good content to the examiner. Witnesses are the eyes and ears of justice. Witnesses can be the people or expert. So any people, not only people, but experts can also be witness with valuable input for the case. Who is a witness? So first of all, we need to understand the meaning. Who is a witness? A witness is a person who gives evidence or testimony before any tribunal. So, of course, he is a person, right? Not any cat or dog or anything, but person who gives evidence or testimony. Who gives evidence or testimony before any tribunal, means before any court. Section 118 of the Indian Evidence Act generically lays down who may testify. So, we have to focus on, first of all, Section 111, 118 which lays down see here the heading who may testify okay all persons shall be competent to testify competency means who may testify means who may testify equals competency of witness all persons first of all see the sentence how sentence is framed all persons shall be competent to testify unless the word unless implies certain exceptions or certain conditions the court considers that they are prevented from understanding the question put to them. The court considers, okay, here, here the court considers that they are prevented from understanding the question put to them. If they do not understand, do not understand the question, then they cannot be witness, cannot be competent witness. Two, from giving rational answers to those questions by tender years. Uh, but uh, from giving rational answers to those questions first of all understanding and second first of all understanding the question and second point is giving rational answers to those questions if they are prevented from those things by what reasons the reasons are number one tender years number two extreme old age number three disease the disease may be of body or mind or any other cause of the same kind okay then comes explanation to section 1 and 8 states that a lunatic is not competent to testify. Okay, so we know the term lucid interval, right? So here it says, unless, see here, unless he is prevented by his lunacy from understanding the question put to him and giving rational answers to them. Only in the conditions that he is prevented by lunacy from understanding the questions put to them and giving rational answers to them. Otherwise, he is competent. Okay. Prime phase in short, the section says that everyone is competent to be a witness as long as they can understand and respond to the question posed. And the court is expected to pay special attention to the capability of with of the witnesses this section is not concerned with number one the admissibility of the descriptive testimony of the witness or number two their credibility credibility so we know in chapter two that uh, chapter two of evidence that deals with admissibility relevancy of in you know, evidence but this section is not concerned with those admissibility or credibility credibility it is only concerned with the competency and no other it deals with competency of parties to be witness then note competency of witness to testify is actually a prerequisite to him being administered or not okay so competency means well it isn't prerequisite pre prior to requisite means essential element in Rameshwar versus state of Rajasthan so here we find a case law Rameshwar versus state of Rajasthan 
It was held that an omission to administer an oath, even to an adult, goes only to the credibility of the witness and not to his competency. Okay? So, in this case, we find that the term credibility is not same as the term competency. If the, uh, if the witness omits to administer, omissions to administer an oath, omits to administer an oath, then even to an adult, it only goes to the credibility of the witness and not to his competency because otherwise he is competent whether he omits to give administer an oath or not. Okay? Health child witness. So now we're going to read side witness. That's also important. This is the first part of witness. It begins with section 118 and ends with section 166. So number one, insurance versus the water bodies. This is the case. Citation is not very much important. Uh, and it's it's of course very hard to remember. Stress versus state of utter produce. It was decided that a child, as young as five years, can depose evidence if he understand the questions and answers in a relevant and rational manner. So, first of all, the age of the child. It is as young as five years. Even a child as young as five years can depose evidence, means can give his evidence, but, there, but it is subject to certain conditions. This, number one, he must understand the question, and number two, he must answer it in a relevant and rational manner. If he do not understand the question, then he is incompetent he, or he cannot be competent to answer. Then comes the age is of no consequence. It is mental faculties and understanding that manner that matter in such cases. So because we know he is five years or he is six years, seven years, it doesn't matter. It is of no consequence, means it does not matter. It is the mental faculties, Man means mental understanding and understanding that matter in such cases. Their evidence, however, has to be scrutinized and, and cautions has to be exercised as for each individual case. But one thing is also there, however, has to be scrutinized and cautions has to be exercised as for each individual case. The court has to satisfy itself that the evidence of a child is reliable and untenable, so it is on the discretion of the court or the power of the court itself to satisfy itself that the child is reliable and untainted, untainted, un, untainted. Uh, any sign of tutoring, tutoring means teaching to the child to what well, well, to say in, as a witness. Any sign of tutoring will render evidence questionable, as decided in Sangan. This is a case law. Sangan down versus to the Gujarat. So that's important case law. If the court is satisfied, it may convict a person without looking for collaborations of the child's witness. So how powerful a child's uh, child witness can be? If the court is satisfied, it may convict a person without looking for collaborations, without even looking for collaboration of the child's witness. It has been stated many a times that support of a child evidence should be a rule of prudence and very desirable. It is desirable. Okay? Should be a rule of prudence. These words are written, uh, written, typed in bold letters. A child witness is a privileged witness and he may not have taken a weight. A child witness is a privileged witness and he may not have taken a vote. So it's immaterial whether he have taken a vote or not. In M. Shugal versus the King, this is another case. M. Shugal versus the King, it was decided that a girl about ten years of age could give evidence of a murder in which she was an eyewitness. The girl was an eyewitness. Okay, so this kind of evidence are very, um, very good evidence, as she could understand the question and answer them frankly. And the conditions they fulfill two condition that is number one, understanding the question; number two, answering it in a rational manner. Frankly, even though she was not able to understand the nature of oath, but she was, there it is a material, even though she was not able to understand the nature of oath, but she understood the question put to her and also answered them frankly. So this case is important. The king, last word is M. Sugal versus the king, and it was very old case, 1945, 48. Then comes the same principle has been applied in India to throw Queen versus Seva Bhokta, 1874, 14 being, and Prakash Singh versus Tedavampi. So, in, if you want to look through um, Indian case, then you can find this Queen versus Seva Bhokta and Prakash Singh versus Tedavampi. A wire dire test, wire dire test, okay. 
here the court for certain preliminary questions that are unconnected to the case just in order to know the competency of the child witness of a child witness is not essential but desirable of course it is not essential okay but it is desirable so the term essential and the term desirable is different essential is mandatory must be observed desirable is it can be observed just important to observe desirable just it just may ask a few questions and get them on record so as to demonstrate and check the competency of the child witness so this is called you have to remember this term a wire dire test okay and what happens in this test here the court for certain preliminary questions that are unconnected to the case just in order to know the competency of child witness then comes a just may ask a few questions and get them on record so as to demonstrate and check the competence of the child witness this is for dire test it can be presumed that this is a duty imposed on all the judges by the section 118 of the iea 1872 the judge can ask questions also to find out whether a child has a rough idea of the difference between truth and falsehood so the child must have well, not must but judge will test whether he has a rough idea between truth and falsehood in suresh versus the bpa case it was held that a child who is not administered or not due to his young age young years and is not required to give coherent and straight or in straight answers as a privileged witness can give evidence but his evidence should be relied upon totally should not be not be relied upon totally and completely means there must be some other evidence it depends on facts and circumstances of the case in all cases in 90s a trend emerged where the court started recording their opinion that child witnesses had understood their duty of telling the truth to lend credibility to any evidence collected thereof the supreme court has commented contact supreme court has also command commended this practice then comes lunatic after reading child witness we're going to read the lunatic the lunatic can depose during the period of lunacy during the lucid interval the person is able to understand and give rational answers because a lunatic the kind of mental disorder it's actually not, not permanent and he may be sane during the time of lucid interval so in this period he can give rational answers and he is competent the court has to check whether the witness possesses to record capabilities and intelligence to understand the questions being put to him and answers them in a rational manner so the same as we have read in case of child witness the court have to check in r versus hill r versus hill very easy case a patient in a lunatic asylum gave, gave evidence to the trial for manslaughter. Manslaughter means murder. As it was proved that only with respect to his delusions, he was a lunatic and otherwise he was a person capable of giving rational answers. So he was competent in this case. A very good example of this case. R versus Hill. People of extreme old days. Now generally, the court puts questions to determine the coherency as well as clarity of thought of a is witnessed if found to be fit there is no bar for the adult to be witnessed so this is same as child in unity dumb witnessed section 119 of the indian evidence states that a witness who is unable to speak may give his evidence in any manner in which he can make it intelligible as by writing or by science but just writing must be written and science made in open court so those writing and science must be made in what open court and no other because there may be uh, it is only on the duty cause upon the court to see it. Section 109 of the Indian Evidence states that a witness who is unable to speak may give his evidence. Dumb witness who cannot speak uh, by tr tr what, writing or sign. But condition is that it must be given, may, it must be made in open court. Open court. Okay. Evidence is given, shall, evidence of given shall be deemed to be oral evidence. Well, of course, it is reduced reading or it may be made by metro sign or other, but it is oral evidenced. It is said open court because the commission or may determine, define the moment or gesture as he understood them and probably not as a witness intended it. Plus, no descriptions can be 100% accurate. If the witness is literate, he may choose to write down the answers too. His section, this section applies to those people too who can speak but do not want to. For example, a person may have vowed not to speak in a particular day, so to observe science can give evidence through the means of writing science and gestures. This may be for religious purpose to they may vote not to speak. So they can also this apply this section applies to those people as well. A person content to give rational answers, 
is not bad to testify on account of the tensions of wife or being mentally upset as for the sections. So it is a funny thing. A person competent to give rational answers. He is competent otherwise. It's not bad to testify on account of tension with wife or being mentally upset as for the section. That's funny. Even an accomplice or an accused can be competent witnesses discussed at the end of this chapter. Accomplice or an accused. Because he's just an accused, not a convicted person. And he can be competent witnesses discussed at the end of this chapter in section 133. In Ugar Ahir versus State of Bihar. Ugar Ahir. Do not forget the name. Versus State of Bihar. It was held at the Maxim. Falses in Ina. Falses in Omnibus. Falses. F A L S U S. So the word falses is used twice in this sentence. This may be in Latin. In in. Okay. Similarly, how you mug up this? I am teaching you tricks. Falses in. Falses in. Okay. This is one sentence, but this one sentence is divided by this comma, separated by. So, you have to remember this is falses in, falses in, falses in. The last sentence is on, last word is only different. You know. You know. For example, you know. You know, and this here, omnibus. Omnibus, bus. We know bus, vehicle, bus, omnibus. You know omnibus. This is the difference. Falses in you know, falses in omnibus. It's not a rule of law or practice, but places a duty on the courts to carefully separate the green from the chaff. Okay? Then comes a person who has a personal interest in conviction. Who has a personal interest in conviction of an accused or is related to one of the parties is not ineligible. Not ineligible. Means eligible. To be a witness, though his testimony evidence should be scrutinized carefully to prevent any miscarriage of justice. So the person who has a personal interest in conviction means who is the enemy of the accused, who wants the accused to be convicted, can also be witnessed. But only one condition is there. But his, now his evidence should be scrutinized carefully because you know if it will be completely relied upon then it will cause miscarriage of justice. The Supreme Court has even held that a woman not meeting the standards to morality of society is no reason to discard her as a witness or not consider her as evidence. So, a woman not meeting the standards to morality means the woman who is, um, I mean, kind of prost prostitute or this kind of woman, they can also be a competent witness. The Supreme Court has even held that a woman not meeting the standards to morality of the society is no reason to discard her is no reason okay to discard her as witness or not consider her evidenced and then comes the importance of rational and close evaluation of evidence in each of such scenario is stressed time and again by the supreme court in conclusion it can be said that witness can exercise discretion with respect to children lunatics Elderly people defer blind witnesses. Court, sorry, not witness. Court can exercise discretion. Discretion. When the power is given as discretion, that court may do is may do not do it. It's complete liberty power. With respect to children, lunatics, elderly people, defer blind witnesses, the court can check for a level of understanding in these witnesses and then decide to refrain from taking evidence from that. So this was part one relating to the witness. I have read section one and eight and section one and nine. So we'll have to read other sections because the part witness begins from section one and eight to one sixty six. So I have to read a lot of sections. This is just part one.